Hey there guys, it's Tina and I'm back and I hope you guys are all doing well and staying safe. If you're also back, welcome back. Thank you so much for joining me again and if you're new, maybe consider subscribing if you like what you see. No pressure, but we have a lot of fun here on this channel so I'd love for you to subscribe and become a part of the Fancy Fam. All Alright, so let's go ahead and jump into today's video which is all about the Lisa Eldred Seamless Skin Foundation. It's not brand new anymore but I took my time with this foundation to test it out and to use different application methods to wear it throughout the day, wear it with different primers, moisturizers, the whole shebang so I could give you guys a really detailed and in-depth review for this foundation because I think it's an exciting launch and it's from Lisa Eldridge who I absolutely love. Lisa Eldridge is a celebrity makeup artist from the UK. She also has a YouTube channel where she shares different techniques, she does makeup looks, and she talks about her own products as well. She's such an experienced makeup artist and she's worked with various makeup brands. So for her to share her expertise and tips and tricks is really an asset to the beauty community. So if you haven't already checked her out, definitely check her out. What are you waiting for? I'm sure you already know about her, but but just in case, I will leave her channel linked below so you can check her out. Now, Lisa launched her own makeup brand a few years ago and she debuted with Velvet Matte Lipsticks. She has since expanded her range to include lip liners, lip glosses, even a liquid highlighter, and now she's added a foundation product to her range. So this is what we're gonna be talking about today and it's gonna be a very long video, so I'm definitely going to leave timestamps down below so you can jump ahead to whichever part of the video that you're most interested in. So let me go ahead and start out with the details of the foundation and then we'll jump into the demonstration and wear test and wrap up with my final thoughts. So this is the Seamless Skin Foundation from Lisa Eldridge. It retails for 61 US dollars and contains a net weight of 30 milliliters or one fluid ounce, which is the usual weight for a foundation on the market. Now remember, this is a UK-based brand, so of course you have different price points in different currencies. So again, it's $61 USD, but it retails for 44 pounds in the United Kingdom or 53 euros in the European Union and the rest of the world it's also in the pound sterling which is 44 pounds. It is available in 40 different shades that span across light, light, medium, medium, medium deep and deep skin tones and each shade has a specific undertone that will help to complement your natural skin tone. So the product information says this intelligently formulated skin friendly foundation has a custom medium coverage that can be dialed up or down. Self-setting, it blends effortlessly to smooth and unify skin with a noticeable soft focus effect. The formula contains a natural mesh-like ingredient which completely fuses with skin after blending. The final finish is neither dewy nor flat matte but something skin-like and in between. It is best applied sparingly in thin layers. Start by smoothing a small amount into the skin Built to your desired level of enhanced perfection, it can also be used for just concealing and correcting small areas of the face. It is fragrance free, alcohol and talc free and it is suitable for sensitive skin. I also want to go ahead and highlight the key active ingredients that are mentioned in this formula for hydrating, elasticizing, antioxidant protection and skin tightening. So first up we have Oxygen skin. It's a natural active ingredient derived from the nasturtium flower. This plant derived biotech has been shown to boost oxygen levels in the skin to ensure a healthy glow day after day. In addition, it helps strengthen the skin's barrier, boost hydration, and smooth the skin. Next up, we have the Yuji tea extract. It's derived from the Yuji green tea leaves from Kyoto and is renowned for its health giving properties. Highly concentrated in antioxidants, this Japanese green tea extract helps stimulate the skin's own defense system to protect from free radical damage, thus reducing inflammation and premature aging. Then we have another trademarked ingredient, Flamexel. 
This is a brilliantly clever biopolymer network that forms a resistant and flexible mesh on the skin. Three minutes after application, the biopolymer sets, delivering a subtle lifting, tightening, and smoothing effect. It also acts as a natural barrier against pollutants, irritants in the atmosphere, while helping the foundation to really fuse with the skin for a skin-like finish. This ingredient is also present in the Seamless Skin Elevated Glow Highlighter to ensure that both products work and blend together in synergy. We also have glycerin, which draws moisture into the skin epidermis, keeping it strong, soft, and supple. Although first discovered in the 18th century, glycerin is still considered the gold standard of moisturizing ingredients and is the reference to which all humectants are compared. Last up, we have bamboo stem extract. All natural ultra fine bamboo stem extract is naturally rich in silica. It helps absorb any excess perspiration and sebum to give a fresh, soft finish without drying the skin. Again, this is a cruelty-free product. It is vegan and free from alcohol, parabens, talc, fragrance, essential oils, nylon 12, microplastics, SPF, D6, and D5. Now this foundation along with all the other products that are available from Lisa Eldridge are available online only through her website lisaeldridge.com. Now she did have a pop-up shop in London for a couple of days recently where you could go and get your foundation match but of course that is not a permanent storefront so you would have to go ahead and purchase this foundation online. And as with any other foundation it's pretty difficult to match your shade online by going through photos only but I think Lisa did a really good job with her photos and shade descriptions so you can help navigate and find your shade and she also has these blister packs available that you can get free with a purchase on her website or you can buy them individually to test out the shades to find your perfect match and I went ahead and picked up three different options now remember I said that the foundation shades are divided up into different shade ranges so you have light light medium so on and so forth Forth. and these little blister packs are arranged by those different shade categories as well you get four shades in that range to test out so you can pick whichever set you want to try out based on where you fall in the foundation range and I went ahead and picked up three different packs of these I picked up light medium medium and medium deep and I'll go ahead and show you the swatches now so you can see the shades swatched out on my arm and also see the comparisons across all four shades and maybe that can be helpful in determining and what shade may be best for you and I'll also tell you what my matching shade is. So we'll start out with the medium shades which is automatically the shade range that I gravitated towards. So this pack contains shades 21 through 24. Shade 21 is a medium shade with neutral red undertones. 22 is a medium shade with neutral undertones. 23 is medium with golden olive undertones. And 24 is medium with terracotta undertones. And my best match in this range, which is the first shade that I picked up, is number 23 with the golden olive undertones. I feel like that describes my complexion really well. I lean very neutral, but I have strong golden undertones as well. So I tend to gravitate towards medium deep foundations with more of a neutral or olive lean-in undertone. And 23 was just the best shade for me. Then the next set is medium deep, which has shades 25 through 28. So 25 is medium deep deep with golden undertones 26 is medium deep with neutral undertones 27 medium deep with neutral red undertones and 28 is medium deep with neutral undertones I also matched with 26 which is from the medium deep range and this one has a neutral undertone and as you get higher in numbers the shade gets deeper but pay attention to the undertones because that will determine what shade best matches you now we're moving on to the medium deep tones which range from 29 to 32 so number 20 is a light to medium deep shade with red undertones 30 is a light medium deep shade with golden terracotta undertones 31 is a medium deep shade with neutral undertones and 32 is a medium deep shade with golden undertones so hopefully these swatches are helpful you can see 12 of the shades that are available in the medium and medium deep range and these have various undertones so you can see how the undertones look on my complexion again I am neutral golden leaning a little bit olive and you have various undertones here you have red under undertones, terracotta undertones, more golden undertones, as well as neutral olive undertones. 
Now let's talk about the packaging, which is one thing that is very eye-catching. It is different from anything else that we have seen on the market, and it's innovative. And that is something that I actually like about Lisa Eldridge. She's not just giving you another reiteration of the products that are already on the market. She does try to put her own spin on her products. She tries to add a little bit of innovation based on her experience in the industry and working with so many different products and also work with various brands so I was actually happy to see something a little bit different than your regular foundation packaging so it comes in an ivory box with gold lettering with the Lisa Eldridge logo the size and information and also some details about the product and it pulls apart so right down to the box packaging is different from anything else we've seen on the market inside you have the foundation that sits on a little black velvet insert really cute and you have a little product pamphlet that gives you the ingredient details give you tips for application and you also have a QR code on the back that you can scan with your phone and it pulls up a video where Lisa talks about the product and the application so I think this is really handy it's really well done and I really like the packaging so far but of course that's not what you want to hear about you want to hear about the actual foundation bottle which is different from anything else we've seen on the market it is not your standard foundation bottle with a pump applicator it is not even a squeeze tube it definitely has has a different shape to it that reminds me of I'm gonna say it okay when I first saw this I was like that looks like a sex toy like what is that it definitely looks like a pocket rocket all right it has this okay look at it look at it it has that shape that conical shape I'm just saying that's what it reminds me of so it's a frosted glass bottle with a brush gold cap and it has this rocket shape to it I don't know how else to describe it other than a rocket shape so it doesn't stand up as again your regular foundation bottle it doesn't have a flat base to it so you cannot store it like your regular foundation it actually lays flat and it lays at an angle Lisa goes in depth about the foundation bottle design so I will let you go ahead and listen to her video she gives all the details this bottle is different okay and a lot of people have been complaining about storing it and I think honestly that is such a beauty community created issue because so many of us are used to the regular foundation bottle design that we store wherever on our desks on our vanities in our drawers or wherever right but we store a foundation standing up with this you're gonna have to lay it on its side and it does lay at an angle so it's a little tilt so the foundation is at a slight diagonal and again Lisa goes into the whole details of that so it doesn't lay just flat it has a little divot or a little indentation at the base of the bottle and that's where you will lay the foundation down and I feel like the complaints about the packaging are very beauty community centric it's something that we've created as an issue in the beauty community rather than it actually being an issue it's like we have so many products that we have to find the most effective most efficient use of space and storage but is that really an issue for the everyday consumer that is just gonna have maybe one or two foundations at the most I have like 50 foundations in front of me so obviously I'm gonna be like where am I gonna store this when really and truly I just pop it on my desk and it lays flat and it's not an issue but I get it like if you want to complain about something go ahead and complain about the packaging and how you can store it and if you really want to get, store it upright you have the little base of the packaging that it comes in that you can just store your foundation upright if that's your choice I think this packaging is cute and I'm not gonna complain about storing it and it lays flat I don't have a problem with that and honestly I don't think unless you have a huge collection and you just store your foundation in a specific way that you will have a problem with actually storing that but those are just my two cents I'm just saying the thing that I have an issue with with this foundation is the cap okay it has a different shape and it's not completely symmetrical so you have to put the cap on at a certain angle for it to fit properly and it can slide around and just fit awkwardly and that's the only thing that irks me about the packaging is like I have to line it up perfectly for it to fit in the you see what I'm doing there 
This is exactly why I pictured a sex toy. I told you, but that's the only drawback. Like I find myself having to like line it up just so for it to fit perfectly. And that's my only complaint about the packaging. Otherwise, I really love it. I think it's sleek. I think it looks classy. I think it's really innovative and different, right? And I like that Lisa did something different. The pump is really beautifully done as well and it doesn't dispense too much product, which can be a pro or con, depending on how you look at it. For me, I end up having to use four pumps of the foundation, which may sound like a lot when you think of other foundations on the market, but really not a lot of product comes out with each pump. So even though I'm using multiple pumps, it's kind of the same amount of product as I would use with like a single pump of other foundations or even two pumps. For this, I use four pumps. So yeah, I have to do a couple extra pumps, but the product that is dispensed is not as much as other foundations. So if you're going for a light coverage, which I think is the pro for this, if you're going for a light coverage or you just wanna use it to conceal a couple of blemishes or hyperpigmentation or just problematic areas on your skin, you can use one pump to do that and not waste a ton of product by using like a full pump of another foundation that dispenses way too much product. You know what I mean? So you minimize waste by dispensing less product. Again, that's a pro for me, but for others it might be a con because they're like, why do I have to keep pumping this? I don't have a problem with that and I don't see why you should have a problem with that. It takes an extra second or two. It's not a big deal for me. So those are the packaging details. Now let's go ahead and jump into the demonstration and wear test. And I ended up again with two shades of this foundation. So I actually did two wear tests. So you're gonna see that now and then I will wrap up with my final thoughts. All right, so let's go ahead and apply this foundation. I'm going to read the instructions first and I will show you what my skin looks like before I apply anything. So for reference, I have oily skin. It's oily combination, but it's only a combination under my eyes. Everywhere else gets oily. So I consider my skin to be mostly oily. And I get oily within like an hour or so after washing my skin, my oils start to break through. I also consider myself to have a neutral golden undertone. I lean more on the neutral side than golden, so I don't consider myself to have a yellow undertone. It's not a strong yellow, and I definitely am not a cool undertone. So in this foundation range, I actually ended up in the medium range, and I am one of the deepest shades. So this is shade number 23, and it has golden olive undertones. And I thought that was the perfect description for my skin, and from the little swatch, Watch cards I was able to use that foundation on my skin and it blended in perfectly the instructions say to prep and moisturize your skin well before applying and I've moisturized my skin I'm using my Tata Harpa clarifying moisturizer this is for blemish prone skin I've been having some minor breakouts here or there so that's what I applied and the moisturizer absorbs really easily into my skin and it doesn't leave behind a shine so it's more on the mattifying side it says you can apply this foundation with fish fingers with a sponge or a brush. I am going to use a brush. This is my Anissa Beauty foundation brush. For light coverage, begin with a half a pump. Apply to the areas of your face that need evening out and blend well. And you can build as needed for your desired level of coverage. There's also a video that you can watch if you scan this QR code on the back of the little pamphlet. And watching the video, it says to start out with very light layers and build from there. And I'm going to show you what my skin looks like now up close without foundation. I consider myself to have pretty decent skin. I don't have heavy hyperpigmentation. I just have some discoloration around my mouth and definitely dark under eyes. I also have uneven skin tone. So while I don't have hyperpigmentation, I do have some unevenness, especially on my cheek area where it's a little bit lighter in spots than the rest of my skin. And I have enlarged pores, which comes with having oily skin. My pores are just extremely visible and they get more visible over time. And it's just a nightmare to 
deal with. I'm also older, so I am 38, almost 39. My birthday is in January, so I have aging skin. Now, I don't have fine lines and wrinkles, but I do have older skin that has been through it, okay? So I don't expect to have the flush, youthful appearance of someone that's in their 20s. So let's go ahead and start applying this foundation. My moisturizer has had quite a long time to sink in, so I'm just gonna, you know what, let me zoom in a little bit so you can see the texture as I apply it. So I'm just gonna go in and dab this on my skin because I picked it up on my brush. I just pump out my foundation on a little palette and I'm going to blend this in. So Lisa says to start with light layers, which is what I am going to do. So this is one pump of foundation that I applied. The brush will absorb a little bit of that, so I'm going to probably need to use another pump. But as I blend this foundation, it looks a little bit lighter when it's in a glob, but once I start blending, you see it just absorbs into my skin. It blends effortlessly and it looks like a perfect match. I was a little bit apprehensive. I thought I would need to go deeper, but if you watch the launch video, Lisa does say to go lighter than you think you are because her foundation range covers so many skin tones and she goes really deep. So it's not going to be your typical match in other foundations. While I would normally have a shade in the dark range, I ended up in the medium range this time. So that just goes to show you need to go a little bit lighter than you would expect. So here's the foundation built up so again just using my brush and I'm gonna apply some under my eyes she does say you can use it as a concealer if you want to build up a little bit of coverage now you can definitely use your own concealer you don't have to use this as a concealer I mm, I prefer to use my own concealer I don't like to use foundation all the way up under my eyes I mean I tend to blend it all the way up but Foundation just doesn't cover that darkness and this foundation so far it has no discernible scent Nothing that I'm picking up. It's not unpleasant. It really has no scent to it So that's good if you go for fragrance free products and it is more of a thick liquid It is not a runny liquid. It has a little bit of substance to it I do like a liquidy or runny foundation like a face and body, but I also like a thicker liquid So it doesn't bother me at all, but this is a thicker liquid foundation and I'm just building and blending that out and so far it's moving pretty well on my skin. I don't have a primer. I just have moisturizer on and it is gliding pretty well with the brush. Now I ended up using two pumps of the foundation. Again, I'm using a brush so this is going to absorb a little bit of the product. So some of that foundation is not necessarily ending up on my skin. But I still feel like I need at least a pump and a half to get the coverage that I am looking for. And it builds pretty easily on itself. I think that works really, really well. I'm going to use my finger because she does recommend using your finger as well. And I'm going to use my finger around my mouth where I have hyperpigmentation. So I have a little bit more darkness there. I'm just gonna tap it out and see how that goes. That is applying pretty nicely and blending out easily with my finger. It moves easily. Okay, so with a brush or with a finger, it moves pretty well. I don't apply my foundation with a sponge. I don't like that application method because it makes your skin a little bit more dewy. I prefer a brush for that more matte finish, but you may prefer using a sponge so you can definitely apply it that way as well. So here you go, completely applied to my skin. This is giving me more of a natural matte. It is almost full on matte. So I'm sure if you use a mattifying moisturizer or like a mattifying primer, this is gonna be even more matte than it looks right now on my skin, which I actually like. It is touted as a self-setting foundation, so you don't need to use powder because it will set itself but you can also use powder if you want a more matte finish but right now I think this finish is perfect for me this is the kind of finish that I do prefer from my foundation and I'm not going to powder it because I want to see how it wears without powder and it's dried down pretty well it's still a little bit damp so I'm gonna let it sit 
it is transferring a little bit so I'm gonna just show you what this looks like up close I'm also not going to go in with any additional concealer maybe I'll use a little bit more under my eyes just to see let's apply it with a sponge this is a dry sponge so it's not even a damp sponge you can still use your sponges dry it's just recommended to use them damp because that's gonna give you the dewy effect and it's gonna blend product out better and not absorb as much but since I have it right here and I didn't dampen it let me just use it under my eyes as a concealer ooh okay that actually covers up a little bit more so I'm not going to go in with any additional concealer I'm just going to allow this foundation to do its thing and see what happens so let me show you up close what it looks like it looks very beautiful on my skin it's not emphasizing any texture I'm not seeing my pores accentuated at all it's not settling into my lines it feels pretty comfortable on my skin it doesn't feel dry or like it's tightening as it's setting down it does look very matte though so if you want a more skin like finish then you're gonna have to use a different moisturizer or a glowy primer to give a little bit more life and glowiness to your skin or you can add your blush and bronzer and highlighter as we normally do but for this wear test I'm just gonna wear it on its own alright so it is now 1145 and we are about to head out so I will show you what this looks like in natural daylight I'm going to do a wear test we will do the transfer test as well to my face mask because I'm still wearing my face mask and we're gonna see how this wears throughout the day so we're gonna see what this looks like in natural daylight and then I will check in later on to show you how this wears throughout the day alright so here we are in natural daylight and I think it looks pretty good my pores are still like present like this is what my normal skin texture looks like this is my iPhone camera so it's not going to give you the best quality it's the front face and camera you know but I think the foundation looks pretty good it looks flat though because it is definitely giving me more of a matte finish so for me even though I love a matte foundation I would prefer to have bronzer on and a little bit of blush and maybe a touch of highlight just to give it a little bit more oomph like to add a little bit more life back to my skin but this is my preferred finish anyway it's just that I'm not wearing anything else with this and you can also use a setting powder that has a little bit more glow to it but here you have it natural daylight no powder just the foundation by itself and we're gonna wear it throughout the day and we're gonna see how it goes I'm applying lotion to my hands because it's winter time and <laughs> I get ashy so I will see you guys in a bit for a check-in hey there guys so I am back for my check-in it is 636 so if I remember correctly we applied this foundation at 1145 that was the check-in the time check that I did so we've been wearing this foundation for almost seven hours now if I do it from like 12 p.m. to 7 p.m. like just rotate the listen either way my calculation <laughs> would be about seven hours so a full day of wear or what I would consider a full day of wear for me for foundation and I was so in the zone with work I'm gonna be honest I have a video conference call at 1 a.m. that I have to prepare for and I was just in the zone and I totally forgot to check in I probably need to take a nap as well that's not the point let's check in so obviously I look oily and greasy this is what I would expect at this time in the day but I will say that even though I'm greasy in my t-zone let me zoom in so you can see okay even though I'm greasy in my t-zone the foundation has not broken up so you see my oils but you don't see the foundation separating at all and on my cheek area which is kind of more normal I actually don't have any wear which I really like and I did wear my mask here's my mask so I have some minimal transfer so on my nose specifically but other than that I don't have a ton of transfer for this foundation and 
that's a pretty good thing considering that I didn't set this at all. So I didn't set with powder. I didn't use the mattifying primer. I didn't do anything special to prep my skin. And this is the wearer that I am getting. My pores don't look ugly either. They just look greasy. I just look oily. And what I would do at this point in wear is blot and then powder if I was gonna powder. But honestly, the most I would do right now since I would be at the end of my day is blot just so I don't look this shiny and then keep it pushing because I'll be washing this off shortly anyway. So overall, I am actually pleasantly surprised considering again, no powder and no primer. I do like how it sits on my skin as well. I didn't feel like I was wearing foundation. I didn't feel like I wanna scrape my face off or anything, which sometimes, depending on the foundation, I can just get the urge to like, just get it off me. But this wore pretty well. It did a good job. Now, is it the prettiest finish? No. I think I definitely would need to prime with this and add powder just to give my skin a better look but it does look better as it warms up as you can see like this side of my skin like it looks really nice considering yeah the grease is transferring that's gonna happen right oil is gonna break down foundation now I've already tested this foundation out using primer and powder the way I would normally wear my foundation right blush bronzer the works just to see how it would work in an everyday face and I will give you that feedback when I give you my final thoughts but I wanted to show you how this foundation would wear on its own without powder, without primer, with nothing else on, show you the wear and how greasy I would get, and then show you how I would absorb the oil later in the day by blotting my skin. The foundation still looks the same. I have some transfer, but not as much as you would expect, especially since I was so oily. And the foundation looks like new. It's still on my skin. I don't have any fading or patchiness. I think overall, like, look at this. Right? I think overall it looks pretty good and it wore pretty well, but I'm gonna give you all that feedback in a bit when I wrap up with my final thoughts. So here you have it. This wear test is done and let's jump into the rest of the review. All right, so I'm gonna do a second wear test, but this time around I have a different shade of the foundation. So this one is shade 26, which is meant for medium deep skin with neutral undertones. Again, I think this describes my skin pretty well. And when I swatched it out, it looked like it would be a good match. But this time around, I'm going to do a full face of makeup. So I'm going to prep my skin, apply my primer, foundation, powder, blush, bronzer, all the things that I would do in a normal full face of makeup, and then see how the foundation performs in a typical day of wear. Now I already moisturized. I use my Sunday Riley Tidal Brightening Enzyme Water Cream. This is a great moisturizer for oily skin. It has a lightweight texture. It absorbs really well. It keeps my skin balanced, hydrated, without being oily or greasy. Now I'm gonna go in with a primer. This is from Rare Beauty and I'm going to apply that just to my T-zone area paying attention to my enlarged pores which is the biggest problem I have with my skin is the area right here by my nose that has whoa some pores child and it shows a lot of texture when I wear foundation. So I'm just gonna prime that area and press the primer into my skin. Now let's grab the foundation. Again, we have shade 26. It's interesting because Lisa says, hey, you don't have to shake this, but I'm in the habit of shaking my foundation, but I'm not gonna shake it. I'm just gonna do two pumps and go in with my blending brush and apply this. Like I said, this shade seems to work really well on my skin tone. It's darker, obviously, than shade 23, and it's almost a little bit warmer, and I feel like it goes much better with my skin tone. I don't know, I feel like as I lighten up in the winter months here, I will need to mix in shade 23, maybe wear it on its own, or mix these two shades together, but I feel like 26 is a better match right now. 
I don't know, like I can't tell. I swatched it on my skin with the little sample pack and it seemed to work, which is why I ordered it. Like, it was like a backup second thought, like, oh my god, I should have gotten shade 26. And technically, I can return shade 23, but I don't know if I want to be bothered with returning it right now, because I might use it as a mix-in shade. We'll see how I feel about this foundation after this wear test, because this will determine my final thoughts on the foundation. I have preliminary thoughts, but I really want to test it out in a full face and I figured let me do that with you guys so you can also see how it looks on my skin in a full face of makeup. Now I just did two additional pumps of foundation so it spreads pretty easily, spreads quickly, but I feel like I keep building it up because it's like I don't see it on my skin because it blends in so quickly. I'm like, am I wearing foundation? Am I not? And in the mirror, I can't see this found. I literally can't see the foundation on my skin. So I keep adding more. <laughs> that may not be a good thing, okay? I don't need to keep adding more just because I can't see it. The fact that I can't see it is actually a good thing. It does give me decent coverage, but it's not full coverage. It is like a medium coverage. I would even say light medium because right here I feel like I'm not getting the coverage that I want on my cheek area. So I went ahead and grabbed a damp sponge and I'm going to apply the product on my cheek over the areas that I feel like I need more coverage with the sponge. That will give you an idea of how this applies woo, with a sponge and also if it can build and layer up. I feel like the brush was absorbing too much of the product. Oh, wow. Yeah, the sponge definitely works. I know I'm like, huh, what's going on? The sponge works to build up the coverage, which is not usually the case. Oh my god, that looks so good now. I am so much happier. So Lisa loves to apply her foundation with her fingers. Look at me, I'm on a first name basis with Lisa Eldridge. But she does apply her foundation with a finger. That's her preferred method. And I feel like the texture of this foundation was meant to be used with a finger. Because it's working really well with a sponge. So a sponge or a finger may be your best bet. Oh my god, that coverage definitely built up really easily and really well, and it still doesn't look heavy on my skin. I am really liking this now, guys. And the color, again, I feel like this is a much better color for me. So here you have it on my skin. That is stunning. I really like that. I can't see it on my skin. Like, I know I said that before, like I kept going, but you can't see it. I mean, you can see it like when you get to my hairline, you're like, yeah, that's not their full hairline color. But look, you can't tell where it starts or where it ends. And that is key for me for a foundation. So I am, I am very happy with that. Okay, let's go in now with my powder. Now I know this is supposed to be a soft setting foundation. I don't trust the crew, so I'm gonna go in with my powder. Ooh, child. This is the Stay Matte Share Press Powder, oil free from Clinique in the shade Stay Suede, which is a medium shade. I love this powder because it's not heavy. It's mattifying though, which is key for my oily skin. I didn't even go in with concealer. Should I go? I'm not even gonna use concealer because I feel like I'm good with coverage and I'm not doing anything crazy on the eyes. So, boom, boom, boom. Let me actually go in and finish up my eyes with some mascara and then I'll come back and finish up the rest of my face with blush and all that. All right, my mascara is on and I just added like a little bit of a deepening color on my outer V in case you're curious what's going on. And now I'm gonna go in with my blush. I'm using this Neo Nude Melting Color Balm Cheeks and Eyes Blush, whatever, from Giorgio Armani. This is in the shade 22 which is a brown shade i'm not trying to do anything crazy on my cheeks i'm going for very nude very neutral so i'm just gonna pop that on my cheeks 
this is a very beautiful brown if you were looking for a contour shade this color might work out because it's a cool tone brown I don't know if I needed to use that as a blush but for me I like a brown blush I don't know about you guys I like something a little bit brown a little bit nudie on my cheeks this might look a little bit too cool tone though yikes that may have been a bad decision let me grab another blush let me just grab a little bit of fig pop from Clinique and pop that over it this will add a little bit of peachiness to it so it doesn't look so cool tone yeah that definitely works better okay and lips let's just grab a simple lip this is my YSL Rouge Volupt shine the shade is number three beautiful easy nude lip and my tower 28 cashew lip gloss which i absolutely love this is such a pretty nudie gloss on me oh yes these tower 28 glosses get me all the time all right am i going to add highlighter nah i wouldn't normally go in with highlighter for a simple look but i will go in with some bronzer this is also from Shantakai. It is their bronzer in the shade Goa. It's their real bronze. And I used this in a get ready with me video. And I wasn't impressed because it wasn't deep enough. But I realized that the brush I was using wasn't picking up a lot of product. So going in with a denser, stiffer brush for this baked formula does give me beautiful color. And look how subtle it is. So I'm wearing a very simple look. But I want a little bit of color on my face and this gives me just enough so it looks dimensional I don't look flat but I also don't look like oh my god she's wearing a bronzer helmet you know what I mean like look at that so here you have it here is my complete face with the Lisa Eldridge foundation and a couple of other favorite products of mine so this is a simple look again this is what I would wear just normally I'm running out to work right now I have to be in the office this is let's see what time is it it is 12 21 yes I'm listening to Adele 30 as you should be doing like excuse me all right so 12 21 I'm running in just for a couple of hours I'll show you what this looks like full face out in natural daylight and then of course I'll do a check-in at the end of the day just to show you guys how this foundation fared again I'm wearing a full face of makeup just a typical everyday face and we'll see how it fares throughout the day let me show you up close what it looks like right now so to me it looks amazing I love the color match the color match is so spot on right now even though 23 worked for me this just looks so much better so here you have it everything looks amazing it's smooth I mean I have powder and everything on but it looks amazing I don't look like I've caked on foundation at all it still looks very natural but it's very matte because I have oily skin so of course I mattify a ton but I think it looks very natural and very beautiful so I will see you guys outside and then I'll check in in a couple of hours. So here you have it guys in natural daylight and I think it looks pretty nice. Now it looks a little bit dark but maybe that's because I'm in the shade. But here it is again this is my iPhone camera so that front facing camera really does betray you and shows all your evils but I still see texture. I mean texture is natural right you're still gonna see my skin. But I think it looks pretty good so we're gonna see how it wears throughout the day so wish me luck but so far I think it looks very pretty on the skin and I feel pretty today so I'll see you guys in a bit girl me and my seven bags just made it back inside oh my god so it is now 8 22 I know I know I went to work what time did we check in at like 1 17 ish we're gonna give it like 1 15 but it's really like probably one o'clock the point is okay it's been a while it's been over seven hours I went to work I went to the mall I grabbed food I went to Cheesecake Factory because I needed to get a key lime pie cheesecake that I will eat over the next four days because I don't eat it all in one sitting that is not the point we're checking in all right I oh my god okay Whew. look at my face look at my look at this I really really like 
how this foundation held up today. Like, listen, between the powder, the primer, all the stuff that I did, and I was wearing a mask. You can probably even see the line of my mask right there. I just took it off, so it's still going to be there. Even under a mask. All of this, eating, lunch, and stuff, this really held up well. It hadn't settled, like, look, it hasn't settled into lines. I don't look crazy greasy. Mind you, I blotted as I would normally do throughout the day anyway. But I think this looks really good. And I was able to blot without removing too much of my makeup. I still, like, got some transfer, but it wasn't significant. And let's... This is all day. Look at this. It looks nice, right? And I actually got a compliment today on my makeup. Somebody was like, I really like your makeup. And I'm like, mine? Me? Are you talking to me? And I mean, it's very simple. Even the eyeshadow is, okay, it creased a little bit. A little creasing, a little bit, but that's fine. Like, right? Right? Now, obviously, I am not going to wrap up this video today because... I'm tired, I'm hungry, I'm gonna eat, I'm gonna eat Chinese food. I mean beef and broccoli, okay, without the rice. <sighs> and a little piece of cheesecake, probably two bites of cheesecake. I will go ahead and finish up the video in a bit, but I wanted to check in and show you guys. You can tell like I'm hyper right now. <laughs> I know I just got in and I'm crazy. But here you go, I wanted to check in and show you the wear for this foundation. I am liking this a lot more than I did with the original shade that I picked up, 23. I think with this color match, it's looking a lot better on my skin and I feel like in a full face, it actually worked out pretty well and it held up. So let's go ahead now and finish up the video. I'm gonna go eat, but you're gonna hear my final thoughts. All right guys, so now we've gone through all the product details. I've shown you the packaging up close and personal and spoken about the pros and cons. We've also done swatches of the 12 shades that I was able to sample of this foundation. I've given you a demo of two shades of the foundation along with wear tests. I've shown you different application methods. I've worn this foundation with moisturizer, on bare skin, with primer, and I've even shown you what this foundation looks like in a full face of makeup. And we've done wear tests so you can see how this foundation wears throughout the day. I think we're ready to go ahead and jump into my final thoughts. And I like to start out with the price point which we've already spoken about. This foundation retails for $61. It contains the same amount of product as most other foundations on the market which is one fluid ounce or 30 milliliters. It's a pricey foundation, okay? It is rivaling higher-end foundations, and I think Lisa Eldridge kind of positions her brand on the luxury side of makeup, which is not necessarily a bad thing because I do feel like Lisa Eldridge deserves to be positioned with luxury brands on the market because of the innovation and the thought that goes behind the product formulations. This formulation is different than anything else we've ever seen. She's incorporated different ingredients that are trademarked, and that is unique to her formulation and I do think from testing this foundation out that it is different from any other foundation that I've tested out and you can tell that a lot of research and effort went into developing these products so the price point while it might be steep I don't think it's a bad price point given what you're getting. And if you're not into luxury makeup, then Lisa Eldridge would probably not be for you. So if you're willing to spend $61 on a high-end foundation, then this might be right up your alley. But I understand that this might price other people out of trying this foundation, and that is completely understandable this may not be the foundation for you to try out. I also appreciate the shade range that is available. We have 40 shades that range from a light to deep, and it goes really light and really deep with various undertones mixed in. And I feel like a couple of the shades can cross over too. So I think you should be able to find your shade match here. And if you're unsure, I like that there are the sample blister packs available. So you can try the foundation out before you actually commit to the $61 purchase. Because it's a steep price point, you're buying it online, so you want to make sure that your shade match is perfect for you and the sample packs actually help me to find my shade match so the recommendation for your shade match directly from lisa is to actually apply it to your skin and blend it out don't just do a heavy swatch where the product is still wet 
allow it to blend into your skin and merge with your skin to see if the shade matches and that's what I did with shade 23 initially it looked like it would be too light right but when I blended it on my face I was like oh that is such a good match so that's why I went with that shade and that shade actually works really well for me especially as my skin lightens up in the colder months but then I decided hey let me try out shade 26 again another neutral undertone shade but just a level up in depth and that that also works really well for me and again you have to blend it into your skin don't just swatch and be like oh that's my shade no blend it in probably even try to wear it it doesn't necessarily oxidize but it does kind of change color a little bit like it deepens up a little bit on your skin it's not oxidizing throughout the day and throughout wear it's just that initial application when it blends and merges with your skin I think it's because of that mesh like ingredient that's meant to really blend with your skin and become one that it deepens up a little bit so the shade might not look like your match right away but once you blend it in you'll see it and definitely go with the undertone that you've been matched with in the past so for me again I'm a neutral undertone so I went for the neutral shade and I went for the shade range that I usually fall in now Lisa says her shades run a little bit lighter so if you think you're in the tan range maybe go for medium light medium I am usually on again the deeper side of tan so that's why I went for medium and medium deep and I was able to find my perfect match in those two ranges so again play around with it determine your shade match before fully committing to a bottle and I'm actually happy with the two shades that I got and I was gonna return one because there is a return policy but I decided to keep both because I do like the formulation all right, that is a great segue into talking about the product and the performance. You already saw the demonstration, so you already heard my initial thoughts about this formulation. So remember, the formulation is vegan and cruelty-free, which is key for a lot of people. It's also paraben-free, talc-free, mineral oil-free, and SPF-free, and all those other frees, which I thought was interesting, but if you really think about it, if you want a foundation to work on various skin tones, various skin types, such as sensitive skin, you want to go ahead and avoid the majority of those ingredients so I think this formulation is really well done and there's some trademarked ingredients that seem to work well in this formulation and again it's slightly different from anything that I've experienced from other foundations from the shade match and how it blends into my skin it kind of merges and becomes one with my skin and I really like that so it's fragrance free as well so there's no added fragrance again great for sensitive skin or if you just avoid fragrance in your products so this foundation is a liquid foundation and it has medium viscosity it is not too runny not too thin but it is also not too thick where it feels too creamy or emollient it is a nice happy medium and I think it glides over the skin really well without feeling greasy oily or too lightweight and it also blends and melts into the skin and creates this like second skin finish that looks really natural it's not drying at all it's not dewy it just looks like your skin your natural skin the natural finish of your skin I don't get greasy at all and I think that has to do with the bamboo stem extract that has those oil absorbing properties that keeps you shine free all day but it looks like second skin when I put this foundation on I can't tell that I'm wearing it I'm wearing it right now and you can't tell I mix the two shades 23 and 26 together they mix really easily together and you can't tell that I have foundation on when you look at my skin you can't see a powdery finish well I do apply powder but it's self setting so you don't even need to apply a ton of powder which is another pro to the foundation but we'll get into the self setting part but the finish it looks like your skin it doesn't look like foundation at all you don't see the pigment particles you don't see any powdery residue nothing I think that is fantastic and the formulation itself has these added extra ingredients that I feel like do actually benefit your skin so we have the nasturtium extract right which helps to boost oxygen level and strengthen the skin barrier boost hydration and smooth the skin and I feel like it does that because my skin looks healthy while I'm wearing the foundation and it feels healthy after I remove it so I do feel like having these ingredients in the foundation formulation is actually beneficial to the skin and you're wearing this for hours throughout the day so to have those added benefits is really key we have the green tea extract which is antioxidant rich and we have this mesh like ingredient the filmexil 
which I feel like does definitely smooth the skin. And I feel like it does create that soft focus veil over the skin that isn't too artificial. It doesn't look like a filter. Oh my God, like your skin is blurred. It just looks like naturally perfected skin. And I love that. And like I said, the bamboo stem extract, I feel like helps to keep my oils at bay. I have very oily skin. And like three hours in, four hours in, a foundation will start to show wear because my T-zone gets really greasy. And I've been filming under hot lights for the last few hours. And you see my skin, it looks glowy. I barely set with powder. And my skin just looks natural. It looks so beautiful and healthy. Ugh, oh my God, it really does look really beautiful on the skin. And that's where the self-setting comes in. So this is another pro for me of this foundation. It says it's self-setting, right? Which means you don't have to powder, you do all that. I, however, always powder my skin because I have oily skin. Plus I like the look of powder on my skin. I like a mostly matte look. I don't have to use as much powder with this foundation for it to give me that matte look and I don't have to like reapply and blot too much throughout the day. I feel like this foundation really doesn't need a ton of powder. Not necessarily just to set it but to give it that finish. It gives a beautiful finish on its own but I do feel like it does have that self-setting quality. However, it is not transfer proof and it doesn't claim that. So just because it says it's self-setting doesn't mean it's transfer proof so if you wear a mask it will transfer. It will get on your hands if you touch your face. It will get on clothing and it will move if you touch it, but I didn't expect it to be transfer proof because it didn't claim to be. It just says it's self-setting, which to me just means I don't necessarily need to use a powder or I don't need to use as much powder, and I definitely think that's true. I don't need to use a lot of powder to set this foundation down, and I don't get extremely oily throughout the day. So I do think it is self-setting. I just don't think you should expect it to be transfer free. Now let's talk about the coverage because it does say that it is a light to medium buildable coverage and I do agree with that as well. As you saw from the demonstration, you can definitely go very light with this. In fact, the first layer is like, what is happening? I don't see anything happening. Is there coverage? Is there not coverage? So I feel like if you go for a more lightweight foundation, this might be right up your alley because you can definitely share it out and you can build it up in areas that you need more coverage. I feel like this foundation is very flexible like that and you can use it as kind of a spot concealer, not as like a full on concealer, but if you just have like a little spot that you need to cover, you can layer this up. And I found that it works really well with a sponge. And I don't typically use a sponge, I prefer to use a foundation brush, but the foundation brush almost gives you a lighter coverage than if you use the sponge. With a sponge, it builds up so well. So if you were using this as a concealer or you were trying to build up coverage, go in with a sponge and apply this. Just dab it over and again, it meshes with itself, it meshes with your skin so it doesn't look like layered caked on makeup, at least not on my skin. And again, I have more oily combination skin so I don't have problems with dry flaky spots. So for dry skin, I can't speak to that but I can speak for my skin. It layers up really well, it meshes with my skin without looking like I caked on foundation but the coverage is still getting built up and I'm just like, Oh yes, this is working really well and it gives me the perfect coverage that I like, which is a solid medium. I don't like a full coverage necessarily, but I like a solid medium that is gonna really even out my skin and cover my hyperpigmentation and I think this foundation definitely offers that and I can build it up in areas that I need to build it up without it being cakey. All right, wear time. Now there is no declaration of wear time for this foundation, which I appreciate because all these claims of 24 hour, 36 hour foundation, like who is wearing, why am I wearing my foundation for that long? Like what am I doing? Come on now. This foundation wears well throughout a typical day and a typical day for me is about eight to nine hours and you saw the wear test where time got away from me and I thought it was gonna be a shorter day and it ended up being longer and the foundation still held up really well and I could blot and refresh the foundation really easily and I'm like, I can go from day to night with the same foundation on, just refresh it with a little powder, a little blotting and I'm on my way and I'm like, I like this, even though it doesn't claim to be long wearing, I feel like it gives me a solid full day of wear and I can extend the wear 
by refreshing my makeup by blotting and powdering and going and I think that is fantastic again there's no declaration of long wear or two hour wear, or 24 hour, 30, who declares two hours? But you know what I'm saying, right? There's no declaration of that, but I think it does wear for a pretty decent amount of time. I think you can go a solid five or six hours without needing to blot if you have oily skin. And that was my experience with it. I blotted about five hours in just to get rid of some excess oil around my nose. Like right now, even though this looks fine, like I'm fine with this glow, but I would still want to block because I just like a matte finish. So depending on the finish that you're into, you may not even want to block because it still looks really beautiful on the skin throughout wear. Now how about how it feels on the skin? For me, it feels very lightweight. I don't feel like I'm wearing foundation. It isn't tightening. It doesn't feel heavy. I don't feel like I'm wearing foundation, but I also don't feel like I'm not wearing foundation. You know, it doesn't feel like just, oh, bare skin, but it doesn't feel heavy at all. And I like that because I feel like it's comfortable to wear and at the end of the day, I'm not dying to scrape it off my skin. So I do like how it feels and I also like how it removes because it removes very easily. I don't have to scrub at it. Just my regular oil cleanser or my makeup remover balm gets this off, no problems, no issue. And it mixes well with other products that I've layered it with. There hasn't been an issue with any of the primers that I use in my rotation. All of them work really well and they help to extend the life of this foundation. And I feel like they just work well with it. I haven't had an issue with any of the powders that I've used to set this foundation. Again, I don't need a lot of powder because it's self-setting. Still set it with powder. I haven't had an issue with it caking up or looking just heavy on my skin. So the powders it interacts well with, the concealers, the cream blushes, the powder blushes, the powder bronzers, highlighter. I haven't had an issue with like my concealer looking stark with this foundation. It just wears well with all the products that I've paired it with. So no issues there as far as I'm concerned. And over Overall, I think we've covered all the points so we've covered the finish of the foundation which is a natural skin like finish it's not matte definitely not matte not dewy not satin even I just think it's a very natural skin like finish the coverage again light to medium buildable it builds up really well layers really well mixes with other products really well it also wears really well and it feels comfortable on my skin and the removal is really easy as well. A simple cleansing oil or cleansing balm gets rid of it really simply and then I just do a double cleanse and that's it. I have no issues with my skin feeling tight or icky afterwards. It actually feels like it helped boost the hydration in my skin. So I do feel like the ingredients do have some skincare benefits. So overall I think I've hit on all the points but if there are any other questions, leave them below. I will try to answer them. I know this is a long video. I know there is tons and tons of information. Again, feel free to jump around by chapters. Go to the section that you're most interested in. But I try to give a really in-depth and thorough review of this foundation because it is one of the more innovative foundations that we've seen on the market. It definitely has an interesting packaging. And I feel like it's one that I was actually excited about. Not many foundations foundations get me excited I mean it's a foundation like how excited am I gonna be about a complexion product but this foundation did definitely excite me and I wanted to share my thoughts with you guys and give you a review show you a wear test and show you how it fares on my skin so hopefully this video was helpful for you guys again if you have any other questions leave them down below and I will try my best to answer them and I will leave Lisa's video down below where she speaks about the foundation as well as a link to her website where you can pick it up and I will also leave links to my Instagram and Twitter where you can follow me along. Whew, and I have spoken for a long time. So until my next video, which will be very soon, I'll talk to you. Bye, guys.